Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Thank you for passing through and stopping to see what I've got to say. If it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe, share and engage with my subscribers and returning subscribers. Yeah, thank you for your support, for your words of inspiration. And incidentally, if you see something in my videos and you want to comment on it, please comment in the, you know, underneath the actual video um, rather than send emails to me because I'm not going to redo that video. So it's much better for other people to benefit from your knowledge, your experience and your findings. So that's what I need to ask you to do. Um, today, oh, I just can't get away from it, can I? As much as I would love to get away from this, anything to do with the big CV, I just cannot get away with it. But I had to talk about it again today because there's something called herd immunity. You've probably seen it in the papers recently. Herd immunity is where the government believe that if everyone passes through the virus, we will develop an immunity to it. And to prove that this is the case, they want to vaccinate us all. They want to have these max vaccinate, mass vaccinations where I believe they want to inject us with the coronavirus to see if we will build an immunity to it. Have you ever heard such a load of tosh? Herd immunity. Look it up. Put it in your Google search and it will come up. So that's the first thing. The herd immunity, um, believing that all of us must all pass through the virus and then we'll develop some kind of immunity. How does that make sense? The second thing, what was the second thing? Um, oh, I've said about the mass vaccinations and, you know, they're working on them. They say they're coming out soon. So that's what all the hype is about. But guess what? I I just cannot believe this. They're talking about people staying at home if they have a dry cough. They're talking about mass vaccinations. They're talking about travel bans. They're talking about people self-isolating if they have a slight, if they have a mild cold. And yet they are not stopping football. The football is going ahead. Football stadium, football matches, they're going ahead. And they draw millions and millions of people. So why, if everything is so serious and this coronavirus is so contagious, why aren't they banning the football matches? Well, we all know why that is, don't we? 16.4 million attending, making billions in revenue. They don't want to stop that. So is the coronavirus as serious as it says if they're not prepared to ban football? Because I was thinking yesterday when I did my video, they'll probably start closing the clubs. They'll probably start closing, um, you know, like discos. And then I thought maybe they might even stop people going to the cinema. And then the thought of football matches came to mind. Woe and behold, in today's newspaper, they're talking about mass inject mass vaccinations, but oh, football can go ahead because they don't want to be too alarmist. What is more alarming? Isn't it more alarming to tell people to self-isolate if they've got a mild cold? Isn't it more alarming to tell people that, that there's going to be all these mass vaccinations? Isn't it more alarming to stop people from traveling from one city to another? To stop people, you know, having all this hype. And yet for football, oh, if it's got, it can't touch football. Oh, no. Britain will die without football. That's why it's a load of bloody tosh. If it was as serious as they said it was, how the hell can they keep football going? And they're saying, oh, well, they can't have football behind closed doors. They have to keep the matches going. I could not believe it. That's why you've got to be sensible. When you're listening to all this stuff, I mean, I looked at a couple of videos. I mean, they've... Uh, 
they, I saw an Aldi. The signage wasn't in the UK. But the queue! Honestly, it was like a concert. The people waiting to get into Aldi. And as soon as they got in there, and then they showed me one with Costco. And this is all for toilet rolls, you know. I don't know what this fetish is for toilet rolls and nothing else. I mean, toilet rolls. Why toilet rolls? Toilet rolls and pasta. Anyway, let me make sure I've covered everything. Um, government says if the virus is allowed to pass through the entire population, we will require a herd immunity to it. Mass vaccinations are on their way probably compulsory, and they will be injecting us, I believe, in my opinion, with the coronavirus, because you know when they give you the flu, they're giving you the virus, aren't they? they they're injecting you with the flu virus. So what's to say when that when the mass, mass, sorry, the mass vaccinations come out, they won't be injecting you with the coronavirus? That's what it sounds like to me. That's what it sounds like they're telling us. You've got to listen and you've got to pay attention, peeps, because I don't know what they've got planned for us, but it doesn't sound like it's very nice. Anyway, um, they also intend to increase the proportion of, a pop of population they are testing. That's a, what they call it, an anomatopay. An anomatopay. You know when those words sound the same. Anyway, they also intend to increase the proportion of the population they are testing. I didn't even know they was testing any population. I mean, are these random population tests that they're doing? What kind of tests are they doing? Are they just stopping people at random and testing them and goodness knows what else? And then they will apply social distancing. Have you ever heard such a load of tosh? Well, it's not even tosh, you know, it can be quite serious. Because now they're talking about their distance of socially. How they, and, and how ironic is that? If they're going to have distance of socially, how are you going to get to the football match? You tell me that. Apparently people must stay home if they have a, even if they have a dry cough. But the irony is that schools mustn't close down. And you know why? Because if the schools close down then the parents will have to stay at home and look after the children. And then there'll be nobody in the health service and nobody to look after anybody else. Because remember, all those parents are working, or the majority of them. So isn't it strange and isn't it strategic that they can choose what services they are closing down? I think this is quite a bizarre turn of events really bizarre it doesn't make sense at all so let's see we've got almost 18.4 billion people attended the 1655 matches in the championship league one and league two you know how much revenue that is then in june 2018 European football was worth a record 22 billion, says Delwatt. The big five European leagues generated a record of 14.7 billion euros, which is 12.6 billion sterling pounds in revenue. And that was in 2016 and 2017. I couldn't find any more recent figures. And nine, a 9% annual increase, according to... Um, to new figures from Del Delwatt. Is that how you pronounce it? Delwatt? D E L O I W T E. During the 2019 Oblique 20, 2020 Premier League football season, Manchester City paid the highest average salary to players throughout the year at 6.99 million British pounds the second highest average annual first team player salary in the Premier League for the season was paid by Manchester United with £6.3 million. In 2015, the Premier League of that season, UK's top football league and its clubs, contributed £3.36 billion to the nation's GDP. 
across the field, the total ecosystem of the league and club supports employment of more than 100,000 FTEs and added around 2.4 billion to UK's government coffers through tax receipts. So, do is the coronavirus as bad as it says, or is it just about convenience? It's only bad if it affects. It's only bad if it affects our our income. So when it comes to football, making all that dosh and giving out all the salaries, then all of a sudden, it's a different kettle of fish. Coronavirus is serious. It's bad. Funny thing is, with all this hype, and what's going on, will anybody be attending the football match, please? They've, they've made their bed, they're going to lie in it. Because how are people going to feel comfortable going to a football match with thousands and thousands of people when there's all these rumours about the coronavirus? People are just about um, able to go to the bloody underground and go to work without worrying about it. So how the hell are they going to leave their houses and go to a football match? Well, I just had to share that with you. And you can share it with whoever you like. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.